Hello, and welcome to the first of four training modules on the principles of earth grounding resistance. My name is Luis Silva, and I'll be your host for today. While grounding is often misunderstood, two key concepts should never be compromised. Number one, safety. If a fault to ground occurs, the system must be properly grounded and bonded so that the breaker can cut off the power. Otherwise, if a person touches a metal case, they will become the path to ground and could become electrocuted. According to OSHA, roughly 10% of private industry fatalities per year are a result of electrocutions which could be easily avoided. We know from previous experiments and studies done by Charles Glaziel that it takes as little as 10 to 20 milliamps for muscular contraction and 100 milliamps for ventricular fibrillation which could ultimately be fatal. Number 2. Uptime According to the website copper.org, lightning strikes on equipment with poorly maintained production systems destroy millions of dollars of equipment and lost production every single year. And according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, each year lightning strikes 25 million times across the United States. Is your equipment properly grounded? Testing the grounding system is important during initial installation but just as important as part of a routine preventive maintenance program. This is because a grounding system can be damaged over time due to such conditions as corrosive soil, loose electrical connections, and damaged components. Testing must be performed at regularly scheduled intervals because environmental conditions may change. For example, drying of the soil changes the moisture content and then can cause changes in the grounding system. Testing a grounding system is performed during and after system installation using earth ground testers and ground clamp meters as shown on the screen. The conductors include the wires, connections, terminals, splices, grounding electrode, also known as ground electrode, grid, or system, and the soil. Grounding an electrical system to earth is accomplished by connecting the grounding circuit to a metal underground electrode the metal frame of a building, a concrete and case electrode, a grounding ring, or other approved grounding method. Each of the three different categories of grounding are electronic equipment grounding, equipment grounding, and building grounding. Each one is specialized for a different purpose, and when combined, the categories provide a safe and effective grounding system for individuals and equipment, as shown on the screen. Grounding and Electrode Conductor also known as the GC, is the grounding system that provides a direct physical connection to Earth. The grounding electrode is typically one or more grounded electrodes driven into the ground. The grounding electrode can also be the metal frame of a building if effectively grounded. The reinforcing bars and concrete foundations, a ground ring, a metal plate, wire mesh typically installed on rocky grades, or underground metal water pipe as long as the grounding electrode meets the low resistance and all code requirements. Thank you for listening. We hope this information has been useful and we encourage you to continue on to Module 2 of the Principles of Earth Grounding Resistance.